Today, in our hands-on session, we will assemble the Novo the Genome Shotgun from two well-known phages. In this screencast, we will log into our remote server and install Miniconda, that is the most used package manager in bioinformatics, to install the tools that we will need for the practical. Then we will have a look at the uh, raw reads produced from our TIG and Brown in uh, UID. Then we will install effectively the needed tools. We will perform a QC of the row reads. Finally, we will perform the de novo assembly and check uh, uh, how many sequences we will produce. And the last step will be to use a specific program called PhageTurb to check the structure of the phage genome. To log in to our remote server, we need a terminal. If you use Mac or Linux, you already have one. Otherwise, you can use Putty. In either case, the information needed to log in are your username in the remote server, your password in the remote server, and the remote server address. The syntax is ssh, your username, at the remote server address, that can be either a numeric IP address or a domain, like phage.seq.space in our case. If it's the first time you log in, after you hit enter, you will get a warning, and you will need to type yes to proceed. It's absolutely normal, as long as it's the first time you log in there. Then you have the password prompt, and it's very important to remember that we will not see any feedback, no dots or asterisks, while we type. Now, this is a splash screen, and uh, uh, it's absolutely normal to see this information in this server. We can start typing our first command, for example, clear, to remove the text from the screen. The first step is to install Miniconda. That's usually it's the first step anywhere you log in, uh, because Miniconda can run uh, in your user space. This means that you will not need to be an administrator of the server, and uh, it's the best way to have updated packages from both uh, bioinformatics and the general purpose repositories. Usually you will need to download an installer from uh, the internet, and that can be done with wget and then the address from where the repository is uh, uh, stored. But in our case, we already have the installer locally, so we can run it with bash, and then the path to the installer, that in our case is forward slash data, and I can use tab to complete the path to, to be sure that I'm typing the correct thing, then slash tools, and again I use tab to complete. If I don't know what's inside tools, I can double tab to have a list of what's there. And yes, what I need is Miniconda latest, so I can use the capital letter. Now, uh, in the practical, we use minus B, that is the non-interactive installation. Here we can see how it is the interactive one, basically. We need to interact with installer. So for example, first we need to press enter, then we are shown the license, and to scroll down we can press the spacebar, and when we reach the end we must type yes in order to be able to install, and then enter. We are suggested a location for the installation, and unless we have very specific reasons to change that, we can hit enter, Then we are asked if you want to run the Miniconda installer. Usually we want to type yes. In our case we already did it, so we can hit no. And the final step is to source a configuration file that is in our home directory. So at the moment I am in the home directory. That's the first place you reach when you arrive in, in your server. So I can type dot bash rc, that is the file name that I want to source. When Miniconda is active, usually we will see this prefix in our prompt. This string is called a prompt, and after the prompt we can type commands. Base means that we have the base environment active, and in our case we don't have any other environments. And let's have a look if Conda is active with Conda minus minus version. So all the commands have the first string that is the actual program that we are starting. Everything else is a set of instructions 
let's change the behavior of the program. For example, we can supply input file, we can specify where to save the output files, or we can modify some parameters like the specificity, the sensitivity, the number of threads. And um, in our case, we want to ask Conda the version installed. If we try to invoke a program that we don't have, like Conda, I made it up, uh, we get this command not found error. And it's important to get used to read what the terminal writes because error messages can be very informative. We can Google them and we can ask for help. And it's much better when we have an error message than a <coughs> if compared with a generic, it didn't work. Conda is fantastic, but when the number of packages we need grows, it can be very slow. In this case, there is a replacement that uses the same syntax, but is faster, and it's called Mamba. Basically, with Conda, we can install Mamba. And so the syntax would be Conda install. And then we need to specify where to find it. In this case, it's in a channel called Conda Forge. So these two parameters, these two strings are together. Is minus channel, which channel, and then the name of the package that is Mamba. When we type conda install, we'll get a prompt to accept the uh, installation. So at the beginning, conda will try to figure out where the program is and if it's uh, compatible with our system, and then we will need to accept. So now, uh, the convention is that when an option is highlighted, like the Y here, that's the default. So if I type uh, enter, it's like typing yes. And now we have also Mamba installed. In our server, we already have a configuration file for Conda called Conda RC. Cut is a program to print the content of a text file, and Conda RC is the file that we want to print. Basically, we don't need to specify Conda Forge or Bioconda in our search because they are already enabled by default. And this is because most of the packages that we install are either from Bioconda or Conda Forge. In our server, we already have some reads. They are in the slash data slash reads directory. So have a look. let's have a look with ls, that means list. ls slash data, and with tab we can complete, and then reads. There are two directories, Illumina and ONT for Oxford Nanopore Technologies. Uh, I can have more information if I add some switches, for example, minus L for long format. In this case, we see the attributes of each file. The first is either D for the directory or a dash for a regular file or some other characters for special files. Then let's have a look at what's inside the Illumina. We have a pair and sequencing. So there are two files, one R1 and one R2, both for a phage T4 and a T7 isolate. In the Illumina directory, we have four files. In the ONT, we would have two because for each sample, we have a single file uh, they are both in FASTQ format. And they are also compressed. So the .gz extension means they are compressed with gzip. And the good thing is that most bioinformatics program can uh, read the content of gzipped files without the need to extract them. And this allows to save a lot of space. But we'll have a look at this uh, datasets later. Now we will try to install a set of tools that we're going to need. We'll use Conda for this. Now, we can install multiple tools. For example, with Mamba install, I can install SecFu and FastP, for example, and I can install many programs. The problem is that if I don't specify the specific version with this syntax, equal 1.8.6, for example, um, Mamba will try to get the latest version. So if I run this very same command in two months, I will end up with different versions. Moreover, when we want to install a lot of tools, the time required to try to figure out which versions are compatible with each, with each other uh, is longer. So we will have a different approach here. We have in data tools env have a look inside this file, it's a text file, a list of packages, versions, and even build. So we have the exact items 
the exact list of items that we need to create an environment with all the tools and all their dependencies. So we can create a new environment with Mamba to create. Then we can specify a name for the environment. We must spe specify a name for the environment, for example, WS for workshop. And we will say that our environment is uh, going to be created from a file. So it's Mamba env for environment create minus n and then minus minus file and we can we can type enter and this will create an environment with a lot of packages the list is available available in the website and notably we have Skeza that is the the Nova assembler for short reads that we will use uh, we have Proca for the annotation and we have some tools for the uh, QC Now we created the environment and we can activate it, that is using it, uh, that means being able to use the program inside with Conda activate WS. Now I type SCESA, I don't see uh, SCESA working, but if I activate WS, then SCESA should print the help screen. Perfect. So our first task can be to just count the reads and see their lengths using SIGFU. SIGFU is a, a general purpose collection of utilities for sequence files and it has a sub-program called STATS to print some statistics on sequences and lengths. So for example SIGFU STATS minus H will print the options that we have. So we can specify one or more files and some options like minus N or minus minus nice to print a nice table, which we will. With star it's the wildcard, we will analyze all the sequences in the Illumina folder. So we can see that uh, Illumina reads have the same maximum length of 149 bases uh, and a minimum length, but most reads are towards the, the maximum, so the average is 144 and the N50 is actually uh, 149. Uh, this is the total amount of bases sequenced and they can be used to infer the potential coverage, of course, unless we have some contaminants inside. And uh, we can do the same for the Oxford reads. In that case, the read length is more interesting. So we have less reads, uh, but their maximum length can be up to 65 KB. Beside the number and the length, there are two aspects that can affect the quality of the assembly. The actual quality profile of the reads that can be assessed checking the, the quality scores. And uh, uh, of course, if the library was contaminated by the host genome, for example. So to scan the quality profile, we can use programs that will print an HTML report. One very common, uh, commonly used program called FastQC. It will scan all the quality profiles of all the reads and aggregate the information with plots and charts. Uh, an alternative is to perform a mild quality filtering that will do two things in one step. First, we'll discard the reads that we are not interested in, for example, because they have an average quality that is too low, or they can trim the ends uh, of the reads when the quality drops below certain thresholds. Um, and we'll also print a report of the quality of the reads before and after the trimming. So sometimes you can just do the filtering, uh, skipping the QC. But uh, to try fast QC, we can create a directory where to put our results, for example, QC. Now, in my home, I should have a new directory called QC, and I can run fast QC. I can specify that the output directory with minus O will be QC. This is a relative path because I'm already in the directory that contains QC. If I'm elsewhere, the absolute path will be tilde, that means my home directory, slash QC. So the QC directory inside my home directory. 
and I need to specify the reads to be profiled. So we can separate Illumina and uh, Nanocore reads for the moment. FastQC was born when Illumina reads were the most commonly available uh, reads, and in general, all the sequencers were producing mostly short reads. Uh, with longer reads, there are some limitations of the program that would require more memory, and so uh, a trick not to fail with uh, Oxford reads is to add more threads to the computation. So if I run with a single thread, it is possible that my analysis will fail, because by default, uh, the program will allocate a fraction of memory times the number of cores available. So increasing the number of cores uh, will also increase the number, the uh, amount of memory available. And this can be done with minus minus threads, for example, four threads or eight threads. Now let's have a look at what uh, is inside our QC directory. Now for every sample sequence, we have an HTML report and a zip file. So the HTML report is for our convenience available in the workshop uh, website. Under past QC reports, we can have a look at T4R1. So as you can see, there are aggregate statistics dif uh, about different uh, aspects of the sequencing. First we have the, number, the total number of reads, uh, the average JC content, sequence length range, then this chart is very useful because uh, it shows the average quality across the read length. Sometimes this can be useful to decide where to trim the reads if you want to use a very uh, simplified approach and just use a single length for all the reads to be trimmed at. The number of uh, non-identified bases, with Illumina usually we are on a safe side. The sequence length distribution if there are overrepresented sequences, uh, if some of the commonly used adapters uh, was found, and let's have a look at uh, the Oxford. As I said, this program was born with different sequencers in mind, so it's normal to have more red flags here, especially because the quality scores are different and uh, they, the lower quality score the single nucleotide lever is balanced by the fact that the errors are more random, so there are less systematic errors, and so with the coverage you can mitigate them, and the read length can make much better uh, assemblies overall. Here we see something interesting. We will see if this affects the assembly. The sequence length distribution is probably one of the most interesting parts for nanopore. To check if there are contaminants, there are different approaches. One can be to have a look before the assembly and one after. So before the assembly you can run Kraken, for example, and see if you detect bacterial reads. Um, but because the phage genomes are usually small, it's very easy to just do the assembly and see if there are contaminants contigs rather than contaminants reads. So, there are different programs to the, the new assembly. We are using SCASA, that is uh, a fast compromise for Illumina reads. So let's have a look at the syntax. SCASA requires minus minus reads. And if we want to save the contigs in a file, we can use minus minus contigs underscore out. Otherwise, it will print it to the standard output. And this means we can still save the output with uh, um, greater than, so redirecting the output. Let's try to assemble without quality filtering, for example, phage T7, and see how it goes. So the reads for phage T7 are in data, reads, Illumina, and then of course it's T7 star. And then I can redirect the output somewhere, so but in this moment, I will just save it as t7.pasta. Now, let's have a look. We have indeed a t7pasta file. We can create an assemblies directory 
we can move with MV the T7 fast A file in assemblies to take the upper bit. Now one question is how many reads do we have, how many contexts we have in T7 and how large? So we can use sec2 again. Minus M. So of course when you have a single context, uh, you probably have the, the whole genome in a single sequence, especially if the size of the context is, is, is compatible with what you expect. Now let's try with T4 to also filter the reads before the assembly, just to have a look at how the, the filtering program can be invoked. So, they are paired in reads. So we have two input files and two output files. We want to create a directory where to store the reads. And the program is FastB that has loads of options. You can filter, you can impose a minimum length because after the filtering, your read can be so short that it's basically useless. You can impose an upper maximum, an upper maximum of ends. In our case, can be also zero because we have so little lens that if some reads has a unknown letter, we can uh, throw it away. Uh, we can use cut front or cut tail to trim, respectively, the initial part and the ending part if it's uh, of lower quality. There are some machine-specific tags like trim poly G. This is for the next second of a sec that have the the dark color for the G, so in the end you might have a poly G that is artificial. And most importantly, of course, we need to specify the input files. That can be either one if it's single end, or the first and the second pair, and then the first and the second output files. Let's try. Fast B. So minus lowercase i for the first. and minus uppercase for the second. If the quantity is very long, we can add a backslash that will prevent the enter to be interpreted as execute the command, and we can just uh, add more um, options. This greater than is just the terminal telling us that the command is not finished, so it's not part of the command, it's just the character that our terminal decided to use to let us know that it's still waiting for other things. So let's add the output files. Upper case O for the reverse read. Then we can add the maximum number of ends, for example can be minus n or the longer version. So when I type, of course, I prefer the, the short version. Uh, but when I write scripts or when I write my notes, I use the longest uh, version because it's easier to read and uh, in a month I can remember exactly what I did. So let's say one. The name can put uh, detect adapter for E, that is, try to see if there is an adapter in this pair and the reads. I can have the, the length required, so either I minus L or the longest version that is easier to read. Length underscore required. So our data set is 100 ba uh, 150 bases. I think I can risk and put 120 as minimum length required. I can say, well, if the, if the end is low quality, let's cut it. And then I can also specify some other output files. So these are the reads that we will use, but we can also save a report in HTML version that can be uh, easily visualized with a browser or in JSON format that is mostly useful for other programs to be taken take uh, to be taken as an input. So after cut it, I can add minus J for JSON. So filter it, T for JSON and minus H filter it T for HTML. We can add more threads to the analysis to split up, so let's use 4 or 8. Done. 
So let's have a look at filtered. We have indeed both the reads and the reports. <coughs> we can see how many reads discarded already with sec2 stats. We can count both the original reads and the filtered reads. So in my case, I can use star because I use the lowercase t4 for the HTML and JSON file. Otherwise, I can also just specify a suffix. So I say all the files that starts with t4 and then with gz, or end with uh, a q dot gz. I can also add minus n to have a nice report from my terminal. So the number of reads is very similar. The filtering was not too aggressive, and of course we got rid of the shorter reads. Our minimum length was uh, satisfied, and probably also the quality increased. And we can check those parameters from the website where there is a copy of the report. In this case, in fast fee reports. And of course, this is different from fast QC. Uh, there is a table with the before and after filtering statistics, also including Q20, so the fraction of bases. Uh, having a quality score of at least 20 in Q30, similarly. Uh, so there was a slight increase in the quality. The insert size distribution is an estimation. Being paired end, you can see the overlap. It's not always a good idea to have a look at this. Um, then you have the before filtering quality across the position, so there is a slow decay. And uh, so both R1 and R2, and similarly you will have the after filtering quality profile to see if it's uh, fitting your needs. Now we can assemble with SCSA also the filter reads. stats, we can check both assemblies at once. So in both cases, we had a single contig representing probably our complete genome. And we can quickly check if the size fits our expectations. The last step is to run a program that will use the input reads and the assemblies to evaluate how the coverage varies across the genome. Because of course, being if the genome is circular, for example, the assembler will choose uh, more or less randomly the starting point of the sequence. It will not be as we probably would like it to be uh, in our FASTA file. We can uh, work on this tomorrow. But the point is, if there is a coverage variation that can help us identifying features of the phage, we can use phage ter with minus f for the forward reads. So for T4 I can use the filter reads that I just used. And minus P for the reverse paired reads. And then minus R for the reference. In my case it's in assemblies. T4. And of course and a name for the report. Let's have a look at the file produced with ls minus l. So there is a PDF report and a statistics table. The statistics table will print information about the coverage for each nucleotide in the file. The reports are as usual online and 47 we can see a spike in coverage in a specific position, fighting the direct terminal repeats.